Hi, welcome to another edition of the Everlast Power video series. Today we're going to be teaching you how to set up a test plate. Now whether you're TIG welding or stick welding, you need to know how to set up a test plate properly so that in the process of learning and practicing, you've got a good test bed to start with. If done properly, a test plate will tell you what's right and what's wrong with your welding. Now what we're going to do today is just show you how to set up one so that you can get started with your basic technique and practice. If you're learning to weld or it's been some time since you've welded and you need a good refresher, uh, take a piece of angle iron like this. This is a piece of 2 by 2 by uh, 3 16 angle and you can start using this as a good test bed. What you need to do is actually start with the, the angle centered up like this and then you can start laying a bead right in the center of the angle. Then you'll come along and make another bead and what you'll do, you'll just keep overlapping beads uh, pass by pass, layer by layer until this angle is almost filled up. And that's a good way to test your weld too, is because what you can do when you get done with this, you can actually cut this in half in two different directions. You can cut it like this and you can cut it like this in a uh, bandsaw. And what you'll do, you'll slice down and create a cross section of your welding. And you can see any kind of inclusions of pieces of slags or impurities or, or defects in your weld from both angles. Whether it's MIG, TIG, or stick, this technique works pretty good. Now, if you're welding aluminum, you can also get a piece of aluminum uh, angle and do the same thing. Uh, especially if you're welding TIG. Now you may want to get a little smaller piece because aluminum is kind of expensive but the, still the uh, technique will still be perfected with the same type of uh, a situation where you're filling up this angle here. You know, as I alluded to this is an economical way to do this. Now this can get boring and tiring after a while but it does practice good muscle memory and you're not trying to impress anybody but you're trying to get the best results that you can at this point. The longer you cut the piece of metal, the better off you'll be because what it will do is force you to have to make restarts in the middle of the weld. And that will teach you how to lay another bead on top of a bead you just finished. And that's important in welding because you, if you can't restart a rod properly, then you're going to have a problem with impurities at the beginning and the end of your weld. Of course, if you're doing code work, you're always going to clean your piece of metal before you try to weld it. After you've gained some good experience learning to weld your angle, you move up to some plate metal. Now, what we've got here, we've pre-cut some plates here. This is actually done with CNC, but don't let that intimidate you because you can do it well with a torch or a plasma uh, just on a bevel itself. What we have here are two 30 degree bevels that have been cut down a piece of 3 8 inch plate. Now it may not be as pretty as this, but it'll definitely work and it'll be more of a real world situation for you when you're trying to bevel it by hand. Um, but what we've got here, these are two 30 degree angle plates and it's going to form a 60 degree angle for you. And what we're going to do, um, I'm going to show you, we've already cut the other end of it and we've prepped this edge of it here so we've got this metal cut and prepped. Now what you want to do, you want to take a grinder or a flat disc and you want to thoroughly clean this groove after you've cut it because you're going to have oxides in here. You want to get that out. Now this is for a standard test plate that you would do for uh, getting a certification in welding uh, or whatever. But we, what we've done here, we've taken it and we've maintained the same angle. Just put the uh, grinding wheel flat onto the plate here so that it would do it. And we've also additionally uh, cleaned off an additional amount of metal here on the side where you're going to tie into the top of the weld here. Now on the bottom, we've taken a, and, and cleaned a little bit here as well. Now this is a good idea because when you've got an open root weld, your weld is going to come through the bottom here and it's going to attach itself to the side here. So you don't want mill scale coming to the bottom of the weld either. We've also, because we're going to stick weld on this, we've also created what they call a land. Now a land is just a flat spot on the edge of the weld. Now that is put next to this right here. What we'll end up doing, we're going to end up putting an open root gap here. We've got a welding rod here, it's a 332 welding rod. I'm just going to use the end to space it and I'm going to set the, the, uh, the gap with the welding rod It's here. Now typically what you're going to do um, with an open root weld like this, you're going to set the gap for the open root 
with the size or the diameter of the welding rod you're using. Now it can be a little bit smaller and typically when you start welding it will start to shrink up from the heat because the two plates are going to just want to draw themselves together but you're going to need a gap somewhere around the thickness of your welding rod. Now if you're TIG welding one of the problems can be is this is going to take you a while to fill it up but if you're wanting to get a good uh, feel of it don't be afraid to use some quarter inch plate especially with TIG because quarter inch plate will work good for a root pass and a cover pass and a top pass so you'll have about three passes on this quarter inch plate if you're welding with TIG. If you're welding with TIG you're probably going to make four to five passes with this uh, stick you're going to make three to four and MIG you're going to make uh, three to four. Strap for cash you can't afford the money that you're going to have to spend to get the 3 8 plate the flat bar works just fine. Uh, you can get it in two or three inches wide. Um, I keep a lot of two inch wide flat bar around because I use it for a lot of different things and I don't know why I have a lot of stuff that uses two inch flat bar but this will work. Uh, these plates are typically three inches wide but as you can see uh, two inches will give you a nice little test plate anyway and uh, it won't break your pocketbook. What we've done here is flip the plate over and we started making a root gap. Now we're, we're going to tack it on either end. We're going to show you that part of it. Um, we've saved some uh, old uh, 332nd uh, 6010 electrodes and we're going to use those for spacers in the plate. We're going to just set those down in the gap while we weld it to hold the spacing that we need uh, while we weld the open root. Now you don't want to weld this on the table, so what you need to do, you need to find some little blocks, or in my case I've got this two inch angle iron we talked about, and I'm just setting it up underneath the very edge of the plate so that it gives it some space underneath the plate for the sparks to go and for the weld to, to take place.